Hey students, before we get started with the show, I wanted to ask for your help. I'm currently producing my third term film, The Editor, which will be my final project at the Harold Ramis Film School, and I'm fundraising to cover some of the costs of the production. I would love it if you would check out my Indiegogo at igg.me slash at slash the editor film, uh, which you can also just click on in the notes for today's show. And donate if you can, but even if you can't, please share the link on your social media accounts. I would very much appreciate it. All right, cue the music. Welcome to episode 38 of the Film Student Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Lazzaroni. My guest this week is Chloe Caudillo from The Blue Cohort. We talk about how she used to write horror stories when she was a kid, the difficulty in finding the right actor for a project, and the benefit of being a creator in the digital platform age. On with the show. You know, I applied right away. Yeah. And, but because I kind of needed to work and I had a, I just got a new full time job, and I didn't want to like you know quit to mm-hmm. you know. Um, what, 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 what were you doing? I was working in education. I've actually I worked in education for ten years. Okay. Before I ever really seriously started thinking about comedy or filmmaking, I've always been a writer, but you know it's something like I never thought I could do something like yeah. this. So I feel we're probably I'm guessing near the same age. Yeah. Uh, and and we. Like, I know when I was growing up, this was not something you could just go do. Like, kids nowadays have the ability to go, like, just, you know, use their smartphone and record something and put it up on YouTube. And so they have the the ability to create it and distribute it super simply. Like, when I was a kid, like, you'd have to know somebody that had a 16 millimeter camera or 8 millimeter camera or something like that, then have the access to the resources to get the film and also the product like the development process and all that yeah, stuff exactly. like, and it's way too much to just dive into like nobody can just do that yeah uh, but nowadays anybody can like that's that's the flip side to it but it's kind of cool because we're you know we're on the cusp of knowing life before you know all this technology yeah. and and kind of being still young enough to be able to take advantage of all these things right now right um, but I remember so this dug up, um, I think last winter, one of my childhood friends, they found a video that we made. It was like a homework assignment from middle school. Okay. But we, it was like an Arl Stein book that we adapted into like a three minute film. Nice. But I remember it was using her parents' camcorder and she had horses. So we incorporated that. And I don't even remember how we edited it. I think we just filmed it in little, like, in the sequence, <laughs> you know? And if it didn't work, we just rewound it and filmed it again. <laughs> filmed back over So it. I kind of remember I was, like, 12. So that was technically my first, like, filming experience. But, but that's something. Uh, yeah. And, and to look back at, my, you know, at myself and, at, you know, my siblings, you know, was in it and yeah. her sibling was in it. So it was just kind of funny. <laughs> and look where I'm now. Think about <laughs> editing being a thing. Yeah. So you so you're working in in that job. Uh, and what what was the trigger? What made you decide to uh, to jump? Was it the job wasn't great, and you were just trying to look for the next thing, or to jump into comedy? Yeah. Well, comedy or and r- film, filmmaking. film and yeah. I've always been a writer. Like since I can remember, I've always. I remember I used to watch Outer Limit episodes mm-hmm. and like Tales from the Crypt. I got to my parents were like they just let me watch a lot of you know like horror stuff I, I loved horror movies as a, really? as a child and sci-fi and all that so i remember i used to like watch these episodes and then i would like write little stories but make the characters kids and like the situation like okay. r- relative to what i knew at the time okay but i remember like my babysitters would come over my grandma would come over and they'd be like oh my god you're a genius and i kind of knew like i didn't want to i didn't tell them straight out i just don't plagiarize this from a <laughs> show but Garis borrow great art of steel yeah i, mean, I was adapting i started stealing art at a very young age and <laughs> i guess i just never stopped so were you you were mostly writing did you ever do a performance end of it like theater or anything like that um, I, I dabbled in theater in like middle school but i i'm kind of like a shy person so yeah. i was more like behind the scenes mm-hmm. writing and and mostly writing yeah um and I, I lived in new york for five years in my 20s and i moved back i was 30 years old and mm-hmm. i moved to chicago and I remember it was like winter. It was that bad winter where it was like uh, super, super cold here. Mm-hmm. And I was going crazy. In New York, I just had this, you know, fast paced life. I was just busy. I had a lot of, you know, a good front network. So I was just always out and about. 
And then I come here and it's just so cold to even, you know, do anything. To go outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I remember I was starting to get really like sad and I feel feeling isolated from like civilization. So I signed up for a second city writing class. Okay. And from that class, I met some people that were making sketches on the side, had mm -hmm. the equipment. So then I started just like jumping out on those shoots. Nice. And then it kind of just, you know, um, snowballed from there. Right. K keyword in Chicago. It's yeah. Fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who was your teacher for that writing class? Um, Do you remember? I don't remember. I don't remember actually. Ugh. But I did have. I remember taking. They started offering around the time that I was doing these writing classes the intro to TV and mm -hmm. a video sketch. Yeah. So I actually took a class of Dale before the school even existed. Right. Yeah. And that, I, yeah. I know a few people that have come through that that started out with Dale as as one of their teachers or. Uh, I feel like somebody. Oh, was it? Was it Mariano? It was one of the other teachers that, that like some some people had had as well. Uh, that was already teaching in the programs here. Might have been Rachel. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of how I you know got to know the program. And I had one teacher in uh, particular who encouraged me to apply. Mm -hmm. And you know, if I hadn't known about it, I don't know if I would have. Yeah. I would have done so you were you were applying technically as a local, relatively new to Chicago at that point in time, but the, yeah, the, uh, but you you already you'd seen the program to know what it was. Yeah, and it seemed to click because I was at the point where I was making stuff, and I had been able to edit. Like I, I'm a self taught editor. Nice. And what's your what's your program? Uh, Premiere. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Final Cut guy, so. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, I kind of was at the point where I can make stuff and it's like how, what's the next step you know like how can I make the bigger projects yeah. and and bigger things mm -hmm. so and the school came along and luckily they had a nights and weekends uh, yeah program your, at the time your cohort uh I think that was the last one I think the it was only one the only one that, that went through with the nights and weekends yeah and it was it was awesome and nuts you know I, I know the for the for the few of us that worked the full-time jobs it was a lot of I don't even know how, yeah. I, how I survived that year, but um, it was the best of times and also I, the not worst, but I just feel like my life was work and school Yeah, and there was really nothing outside of it. Yeah. I, I've taken the opposite approach. Like I, I was working a I, kind of the same deal. I, I just joined a company and uh, when I, when I first applied, got waitlisted for the first class. And then just kept on pushing it back as I was with a new company. And I was like, I can't just bail on them after a year. Uh, and so I pushed back and back and back and back and back. And finally, you know, was like, okay, I can come now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, it's, it's tough to, to, to kind of make that switch out of day-to-day -day life completely. Um, so, I, you know, hearing that Blue had that option, I was like, oh, <laughs> that could have been nice. Yeah, at the same time, I do feel like I didn't get to do as much as I could have if I really immersed sure. myself in the program. Mm -hmm. And I had to miss some classes because of work things, you mm -hmm. know, and, and it was like really difficult to balance it. But at the same time, uh, I, my office was kind enough to, to let me film there. Oh, nice. So that's my, my third term I actually shot at my office. So that and really, that, that's helped. the company that we filmed Matt's at. Yeah. 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 So you, uh, Matt White, uh, we, that was where we first met, uh, that was your office and he did a, a film, uh, Metaxas, uh, which is about basically like a, a third party company that does CIA observation. And this guy starts following a, a couple uh, and tracking them and uh, but gets everybody involved as like the guy's about to propose to the girl. <laughs> yeah, it's super fun. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that one was ridiculous. And so what was your what was your term three? It was Super Lupe. Yeah. So it was about a cleaning lady who comes upon like a supernatural force in the office and mm -hmm ends up uh saving a day yeah and you you were telling me you used a bunch of special effects with with that one yes so when i you know i had this really strong idea and i kept going back and forth i just didn't think it was possible to do because it encompassed you know like i needed really specific actors yeah and a lot of special effects i had no idea how i was going to accomplish yeah. and who, who were your actors for that one i uh, had Carlos Serrato was was Lupe, okay, and Amanda Hinckley was right. Janet, and Dax Salamanta okay. was Reed. So yeah, I had two from my cohort because we did a reading of the of a script, and they were just perfect. Yeah, and I really struggled to uh, actually cast my title character. Yeah, because it, the the role was like a Spanish speaking cleaning lady who's kind of unassuming. You know, you just kind of 
she's not a script until you realize she's a superhero. Yeah. And so I had, I remember going on all these different uh, casting boards and posting in Facebook groups and really trying to, you know, I saw a bunch of great actresses, amazing mm-hmm. actresses. But it really needed the Spanish speaking, you know, to, to sound Component, yeah. na- like someone who is, that's their native language. Right. And I remember feeling kind of like a jerk because I'm like, I'm one of these like casting agents that, you know, like I have these Latina actresses come in and it's like, but you got to speak Spanish and you got to speak it yeah. fluently. And I'm like, oh, that's what I like. I can't, I can't do that. So, but I, I did write this character. <laughs> the whole point of the short was to uh, kind of uh, break convention. Yeah. So you s- it starts off very cliche and then it kind of, my, I meant for it to kind of turn its, all those cliches on their head yeah. by the end of it. So... Uh, but I, I, I ended up finding a great, talented actress, and I have a very um, kind friend who mm-hmm. was a makeup artist and offered to help with uh, my makeup. Nice. And so she, you know, made her look a little bit older, and then she also made me um, a monster. Yeah. <laughs> so which is a key it element out. in the in the story for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I so remember the makeup for that. I was like, oh, that's impressive for what I, you know are low budget films uh, effectively across uh, for most of these. Yeah. And I remember it's, it's hard f- like for me to ask for help sometimes I think, and it's just hard, you know, as a filmmaker, you feel like you're constantly asking for favors and right. you're like, like one day I promise I'll, you know, reciprocate. In exactly. Some way. <laughs> um, but you know, in this case, I feel like I, I was really lucky to have all these great friends and resources to, mm-hmm. to really, you know, make, um, an awesome short. Yeah. So, so and you've started you submitted that to a handful of festivals. Where where have you gotten it in so far? I got it into the Brownsville Latino uh, Comic Short Film Awards. Mm-hmm. So it actually won the Audience Award there, which nice. is pretty cool. And that's my mom's hometown, which is part of the reason I applied. Nice. Where is that at? In Texas. In Texas, okay. And then it recently got into the Portland Film Festival, mm-hmm. and then some Cine Soul Film Festival, which is also in Texas. Nice. So What's uh? W- when's the Portland one? Did that did that already happen? It's next week. Next I'm week. Are, are you gone? That, yeah. Nice. Uh, I might have to check and see. We. M- I may know somebody else that's there, because uh, a buddy of mine does documentary stuff. And, oh yeah. Uh, but he also does some random like you know short films on the side, and I want to say he might have something in that festival as well. Yeah. Let me know. Uh, I mean, I have n- I know no one in the filmmaking community yeah. out there, so I'm, that's why I'm kind of going to. It's like oh, I need a network and. Yeah, you know, I want to see what else is out there too. Absolutely, and it's it seems like such a cool area. I've never been, but I, I that's on my short list of places yeah. to go check out. I've been to Asheville, which a lot of people say is like Portland East Coast. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, Asheville's fun, but uh, if I'm like if Portland's anything like this, this will be a good time. <laughs> yeah, it'll be cool just to see how, how filmmaking, you know, the, how the community is in other cities. Yeah. So, so what are you working on now? What am I working on now? I I'm just have these ideas in my head. I'm trying to get scripts out. Um, <laughs> And into the world, but I'm uh, editing a stop motion project for a friend okay. that I also produced. And I recently worked on a feature of a summer. I was AD um, with some Ramis graduates. Was that uh, John Hancock's? Uh, no, it was actually Christina Shaver. Oh, Juliet. okay. Strangio, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've, I've met Christina. I have uh, Juliet. I literally just met for the first time like a couple days ago. Uh, she's been in the area, but yeah, just haven't crossed paths. But uh, but yeah, Christina, I've, I've met and talked to her a few times. She borrowed my smoke machine probably for yeah, that feature. Yeah, the hazer. No, is it the hazer? Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. A, it's, it's a smoke machine, but you run it with the right sauce, and it's basically a hazer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we filmed it uh, for two weeks in Wisconsin, and it was just a surreal experience. Like yeah. I took PTO to work, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but it was totally worth it. It was such a great experience, and it was so interesting because you know there's some, some Ramis alumni, wor- you know, working on set, and then we had like people with professional experience mm-hmm. that work, you know, on, on shows and with, um, uh, like in, on the actual Chicago sets. Yeah, yeah, series. yeah, yeah. And then we had some uh, students, and I want to say recent graduates from the University of Madison. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting, and you know, we all kind of we started off, and I feel like. You know, we all communally found our footing together, and mm-hmm. by the end, it was just like we're like a little family. Yeah. So it was which it feels cool. like, or sounds like that's that's what happens with a lot of these sets. Like people just end up getting attached to one another, and you know, but that's that's the the market too, because they're going to be the people that are going to help you get like the next gig after that. Yeah, uh, exactly. 
whenever that next thing opens up. So what are you trying to do in the long run? What's the what's the overarching goal with this? I think if I can just make my own things and help like work on things that peop other people are passionate about that I'm also, you know, mm -hmm. I also support. That's all I want to do. Yeah. Like I don't I have a day job. It's it's pretty great. Yeah. Um, what's, your, what's your day job? I work for Les Mills. It's okay. A, it's a global fitness company. Okay. So I work for the Chicago, the U.S. headquarters in Chicago. Right. And that's uh, that was the uh, it's exercise like uh, um, uh, it would seem like Peloton, but a different thing where you broadcast the the same or like so, uh, a, a leader doing a an exercise program. Is that what it is? Yeah. We actually uh, we develop group fitness programs mm. and we license them to like gyms and okay health companies nice so and it's interesting too because when i started at that company they also do a lot of filming yeah I mean, it's mostly mostly based in new zealand right now but uh, you know I, I got asked it and erickson actually works for the company now too so oh, we're, we're gonna work on some filming stuff for the company together so it's kind of okay. cool it's like oh, those two you know worlds are joining together now yeah. so that's kind of neat so i'm pretty open to the future like i i never thought i would be able to you know, express my creative side mm -hmm. and the capacity that I've been able to do in the last like year and a half. So yeah. just keep doing that and see yeah. where what happens. Do you want to keep, do you want to go back to uh, like actually producing stuff that's outside? Like, do you want to keep uh, doing projects that are uh, um, not corporate stuff that uh, like, would you, would you do another feature basically? Is yeah. That? Yeah, totally. And then also just meeting people. Like every, anytime I've jumped in on a set, I feel like I, especially if it's, you know, a Ramus mm -hmm. set, you always meet these great people yeah. and it's just like, we, we all have that in common of, you know, the experience that we go through. They do a good job vetting. Like it's not, I mean, yeah. people that come in here are no slouches. Yeah. And it's just so crazy how talented people are and how, how in such different ways. Right. So and that's that's what I loved is that they did do the the um, uh, what was the word they used for it? It was kind of purposeful selection and uh, um, kind of diversification of every cohort. So it wasn't just a bunch of writers or a bunch of directors or a bunch of cinematographers. Like it's kind of a mix. So yeah. Every every group got a few random people from different walks of life. Uh, and so that definitely helps. So uh, what what are other people in your cohort now doing? Like if, are there people that have you know, gone full bore into production and kind of dropped everything or, or cause I, I would think with, with the night school end of it, that, that would, that would be a little, it would be a little different. You're still attached to that kind of nine to five job for, for those that were doing it. Yeah. I mean, there's a big group of us that have moved out to LA, okay. like a couple of people from my cohort. And those of us that are here, we still try to meet up and, mm -hmm. and just like talk about life and our, you know, the things that we're working on. And honestly, every time I, I meet up with them, it just totally revitalizes, you know, my <laughs> inspiration. Yeah. So it's it's great. I love my cohort. I love blues. And we're still I mean, there's some stuff that I'm working on, hopefully with them in the near yeah. future. So what did fun. you what did you get most out of the program when you're going through it? I think just structure, because it's yeah. I, I kind of knew how to do these things on my own. But really having to structure my projects and plan them on my own yeah. and it's like you have some ownership of it where you know usually when i had worked on things i was kind of either brought on on some random you know uh, random set person or mm -hmm. you know it's kind of co-owning it with someone else so yeah. like really taking ownership of your creativity and your perspective and your voice and putting it out there like yeah. what do you want to say trying to find and that's yeah that's such a cool thing finding your voice that, that they're they push really hard here yeah of like help finding helping you figure out what your thing is like what's what's your who are your your people as far as like comedy writing goes comedy writing like who, who <laughs> what what stuff are you big into that influences what you're creating uh you know i love tina fey obviously mm -hmm. she's like the queen but i remember <laughs> I don't even know when the Strangers of Candy, when that came out, like the old Colbert and Amy Sedaris and Paul Dano, like I love them and I still yeah. go back and, and watch that and it holds up to me. Um, and just there's so much stuff on that. I can't even keep up, but like Forever is a show that I've watched recently. Have you seen that? It's like Fred Armisen and Maya Rudolph. Oh, yeah. No, I just I, I've seen ads for it. What, what platforms? Is it Hulu? I think it's on Amazon. Amazon. Prime. Okay. Yeah. 
Let's check that one out. Yeah. No, and that totally, you know, when you think about structure, you watch mm-hmm. the first, just watch the first two episodes, and it totally, you're like, oh, my gosh, there, there's a show that's doing this. Yeah. So it's kind of neat, because you really don't know what you're, there's no, like, stable ground in the first two episodes. I feel like that's been the really cool thing about these the digital platforms, is that there are shows that are doing something completely different. That yeah, like, free reign. Yeah. And that's what's exciting for me. And I, uh, going back to, you know, like, us being in a space now where we have all these tools to... Mm-hmm to just do these random bizarre like things no one's done before try some different approach yeah because it was so difficult for so many years for a show to get off the ground if they were trying something new like do you remember uh, pushing daisies yeah that show was great but it was so batshit insane compared to any other show on tv like it was so difficult for it to catch on and and grow versus nowadays i feel like if something like that were to come out on a digital platform it would, it would totally kill. thrive yeah and you yeah. look at like strangers of candy too was on, was on for a few seasons and now it kind of has a cult following a recent development yep yeah, but strangers of candy was uh, mm-hmm. that was also comedy central wasn't yeah. it yeah so that which i feel like is at least that's been the one where th- if there was something new to come up like they were they were the most fruitful ground for trying something completely left to center mm-hmm. nowadays i think it's adult swim uh, for yeah. for television, like that, we'll try something that is just so batshit crazy out there that somehow we'll 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 end up working in the in the long run. Uh, but yeah, for um, uh, uh, Letter Kenny is the, is one of the shows that I keep going back to. It's a uh, it's a Canadian series uh, that's been on for like four seasons now on Canadian streaming TV stations. This one called Crave TV. Uh, but they just started putting them on to um, on to, to uh, uh, Hulu, uh, so you can get the first couple seasons there. But their style is just so strange. Yeah, <laughs> they have so many like it's almost like an inside joke machine, but not the same way as uh, uh, as like uh, Arrested Development. It's it's different. Like, like there there's <laughs> bits that they just go back to, and you feel like you're a person in that bit. You That's know what awesome. I, mean? I love stuff like that. Yeah, like. Lady Dynamite was one that I also yes. I just love it. It's so crazy, bizarre, but it's so I just love Maria Bamford so much. Yeah. Another comedy person. I oh, absolutely. Yeah, she's hysterical. She's, so and she's, she's just so herself. Like she's so herself. The show is so her. Yeah. And she's somebody that just kind of with especially her mental health history and that sort of thing, just kind of laid it bare and didn't try and hide it. Uh, it still cracks me up that she was the target lady. Yeah. You know, like that. And she that was just a character mm-hmm. like because she doesn't sound like that in person at all. Yeah. She sounds so mousy <laughs> by comparison. And how they break the fourth wall and just. Yeah. I don't know. It's just such an amazing show. And, you know, even with the different um, the time periods, there's like three different. Yeah storylines that yeah that work. so it's just so cool to see the things that are, that are possible now and yeah. it's like where do we go from here <laughs> so what uh what was so the, the feature that you said you, you worked on was that one something that you'd written or no I, it was just the ad on the the set what so. was your feature that you did for for your final um it, w- it was actually or, uh, it could have been a pilot too and now i think about it <laughs> yeah so it was actually super loop it so it was like a longer oh, okay. the bigger story so my uh, so you're just like a proof film. of concept for, yeah, the, for yeah. the whole thing. Oh, okay. Do you is that something you want to try and complete? Or yes, my problem with it is I keep rewriting it. Like there's so many different storylines I have. There's so many different. I almost feel, feel like it would work better as kind of like a a show. Mm-hmm. And the character too. It's just like I still gotta like I nailed her down and I have her in the the short, but I need to kind of expand on that mm-hmm. uh, character in the longer you know, in a bigger way. And yeah. I think that's where I'm kind of stuck. Like I'm still working on that. Yeah. Still a work in progress. And I feel like that's, that's such a modern problem to like run into characters that are too big for a movie, mm-hmm. but maybe not necessarily of like full series. Like th- I've, I've never written something that I feel like could run like seven seasons. Yeah. Like the stuff that I've, I feel like at most would be like maybe three seasons. Of, you know, it would be like a, um, uh, uh, what's a show that had a limited arc? Um, oh, now I'm blanking on any of them. What's the uh, Stranger Maniac. Things? I feel like is uh, it ha- feels like it's gonna have a, like a limited arc. Like I want to say they're only gonna have like four seasons or something. Yeah, like or that, Maniac was a recent one, right? That's like is that is that a limited? Yeah, I, think, that, I don't that, know. Might, but they're probably gonna. Have I started watching in one episode and I, ha- I wasn't able to get into it. Like, yeah, I, I'm gonna go back and try it again. It might have just been like the day that I watched it, but. Uh, that one's it's slow. It <laughs> is, but w- I, I got to the end, and I, I struggled with it too because my brain is so ADD. Yeah. Um, but I feel like when you get to the end, you appreciate it's the worth journey. It. Yeah, yes. the journey going through all of it. 
Uh, well, so what's what's next? What are you uh, what are you trying to get off the ground now? I'm um, just uh, I'm still doing the festival circuit, so um, doing that for the next. Are you using it to try and like raise funds to to produce something more from it, or is it really just to to show what you can do? Show what I can do, I think, mm -hmm. and yeah, to see if I could do something bigger with it would be great. Yeah, but I think I also need to go back and rework the feature. Yeah, to really have something that I can show. Right. So how many drafts have you gone through? Not too many. <laughs> 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 uh, too too many. Um, and I also want to like I feel like. It's we have all the tools we, you know, we need to make a feature. Mm -hmm. And even being on the set of the one this summer, it's like, wow, like this is possible. Like I know right now at this point, I know all the people I need to make something happen. Yeah. But it's just you know the again the structure. Like I just need to set that structure for myself. Right. Give myself like a um, timeline to get things mm -hmm. done. And to be honest, like the year of school and work was so intense. I kind of took the summer to yes i worked on some projects but i also just kind of backed off for enjoyed a while. summer yeah <laughs> but now that the winter chicago winter has arrived i will you're gonna be holed up in, up in my <laughs> apartment <laughs> rewrite it seven more times things. yes <laughs> well cool well uh if uh, if people want to try and track you down and kind of see what you're up to or find out where uh where super Live is uh, actually screening for uh, for festivals where can they find you uh twitter i'm coco loca 13 and Instagram, I'm just coco.loca. Nice. Uh, well, awesome. Well, thank you for coming on. I Thanks for having it. me. That was Chloe Caudillo. Thank you to Chloe and to the Harold Ramis Film School and the Second City staff for their help. The song on this week's episode was Wait For You by Derek Every. Find more of Derek's killer music at DerekEvery.com. That's D-E-R-E-K-E-V-R-Y. This show is recorded and edited by me, Tony Lazzaroni. If you want to hear more from me and my classmates, teachers, and a few special guests, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. If you have questions or comments, send us an email at filmstudentpod at gmail.com or find us on Twitter and Instagram at filmstudentpod. And be sure to check out some of my and my classmates' work at filmstudentpod.com where you can also find links to all of our past episodes. See you all next week. Class dismissed. Class dismissed.